most of us are okay with a bit of blood, a jump scare or two, and the occasional existential theme. Being able to dabble in these moments without being plunged in at the deep end allow for that adrenaline rush that so many of us crave when watching a horror movie, without making us feel like we want to curl up into a ball and weep uncontrollably. In lists like these, the same films tend to crop up. A Serbian film, Salo, Antichrist, or The Girl Next Door. Don't get me wrong, these are indeed very disturbing and deeply upsetting, but given that these films have had the spotlight for a while, I figured we should discuss some lesser known ones. For this list, films that have come out in the last decade will be taken into consideration, with some well-known flicks and some indie gems being woven in too. It goes without saying that this list may contain topics that some viewers may find disturbing. With that, I'm Tilly from What Culture Horror, and these are 10 recent horror movie scenes too disturbing to watch. Number 10. Tongue Removal – Spiral after the 2017 instalment of the Saw franchise disappointed fans of the saga and casual viewers who went in for a good scare and didn't receive anything of the sort, people were cautiously optimistic for the 2021 film. The Chris Rock-helmed film turned out to be another disappointment to many, but there was one standout moment. Whether that moment was enjoyable or not, however, is up for debate. The first trap actually occurs in the opening scene, which set a tone for the film that unfortunately wasn't followed up. It is a hell of a trap, though, and quite possibly one of the gorier Saw traps in the whole series. Detective Boswick finds himself in a trap after chasing what he thought was an ordinary thief at a funfair, where he is standing on a chair in a sub subway tunnel with his hands tied behind his back. Oh yeah, and his tongue is in a vice. Due to his corrupt nature and lying tongue, the designer of the trap saw, uh -huh, it as only fitting that the offending organ be removed. The wince-inducing scene that follows is hugely uncomfortable to watch, with incredible special effects that make this seem all too real. You can practically feel the tissue tearing. Yuck. Number 9. Crows, the Witch Whilst not as gory as the previous entry, it's the realism with which it is executed that makes it so horrific. As many of us know by now, Robert Eggers' The Witch is a tense, unbearably oppressive 17th century folktale with many horrific moments. A child is possessed and pukes an apple, a man is gored by a goat, and you bet your ass there's witches. Witches that just so happen to steal babies. The matriarch of the central family, Catherine, is deeply depressed after her baby goes missing, fearing for her child's soul as it died before it could be baptised. Her grief only worsens when her the son Caleb dies, causing her to hallucinate in her grief. In her vision, she sees her two children returned. Her baby, she notices, is hungry, and so she begins to breastfeed it. It is then that the truth is revealed. A crow, not her baby, is viciously tugging and pecking the flesh of her breast, all while Catherine laughs maniacally. It's so unexpected and so jarring. Completely devoid of music, and Catherine sits in the centre of the dimly lit screen so the viewer cannot look away. Even covering your eyes won't help, as her laughter and the sound of ripping flesh continues. Number 8. Puppet Chase – Possum a lack of gore doesn't mean a scene can't be disturbing, as 2018's Possum proves. Possum tells the tale of a disgraced children's puppeteer who returns to his childhood home with the titular puppet in a duffel bag. There, he reconciles with his vile uncle Maurice, who exerts an uncomfortable level of control and sparks fear within the main character. Throughout the film, Philip tries to get rid of the literal baggage, but he cannot seem to shake it. To be fair, upon looking at the thing, you'd understand why he wants to get rid of it. There is no nice way to put it. Possum on the puppet is absolutely bloody terrifying. Looking like a spider and a baby with huge spindly legs and white gaping facial features, this is a toy that even the demented Sid from Toy Story couldn't create. Imagine the horror when the horrid thing begins to silently, almost elegantly, chase after Philip. Set in a bleak, grimy world, watching this thing crawl after our protagonist is just beyond anything viewers were prepared for. By the time the ending rolls around and the truth about Philip is revealed, it makes the chase scene not only creepy and horrid to watch, but deeply, deeply tragic. The film really isn't for everyone and contains strong themes of child abuse, so please be careful if you decide to check this one out. Number 7. Family Picnic – The House That Jack Built Lars von Trier is an interesting bloke, isn't he? Having seemingly outdone himself with Antichrist, which saw, among many other terrors, the eldritch horror that is Willem Dafoe's CGI penis, he gave us the house that Jack built in 2018. Lucky, lucky us. The film follows Jack, no surprises there, building a house. Again, no surprise. He also likes to murder people in the name of art, which is a little bit more surprising. Jack recounts his kills to the Roman poet Virgil, including the most disturbing one in the entire film, taking his girlfriend and her sons on 
on a hunting trip. It climaxes with Jack shooting the two boys dead and forcing his girlfriend to sit at a picnic with him and the corpses of her children. He then forces her to feed one of her sons, who of course is dead, all while she cries. It's portrayed so chillingly and so realistically that it's nearly impossible to watch. And the scene ends with the three victims placed in a mural of sorts along with birds Jack had previously shot. Number six, screwdriver, swallow. A psychological thriller that flew under the radar, this 2019 film featured a tightly knit plot, fascinating characters, and some gut-churning moments of body horror. At various points throughout the film, the latter applied quite literally. Hunter is a newly pregnant housewife, and her husband is the upcoming CEO of his father's business empire. Being working class herself, Hunter has been thrust into a very stressful and alien environment, which is worsened by her uncaring husband and his distant parents. As a coping mechanism, Hunter develops pica, a disorder that makes one want to eat in edible objects. These range from a marble to a thumbtack, and when Hunter is having a severe panic attack, perhaps the most disturbing object of all, a screwdriver. The scene is painfully realistic, and watching Hunter choke on this item is just as horrible to watch. It doesn't hold back from the horrors of the disorder, which many have never even heard of. The entire movie is tense and uncomfortable in many ways. Obviously, if you are sensitive to eating disorders, maybe give this one a miss. Number five, laxative, the human centipede two. There's a whole myriad of filth to wade through in this film, but unfortunately one scene reigns supreme. The entire Human Centipede film series is a pretty vile and unnecessary beast, but the second instalment is by far the most unsettling, perhaps in part due to the film being shot in black and white, all except for one scene. When the film's quote-unquote protagonist, Martin, has assembled the titular creature after spending much of his time obsessing over the original film, he decides to hurry a certain biological process along. He gives the victims of his sick experiment a laxative, and it is is in the following moments that the film does show a bit of colour. I'm sure you can understand what I mean when I say that the colour is brown. I really don't have to elaborate further, do I? Number four, Possession, Hereditary. As horror fans, we've seen many a possession over the years, but Ari Aster's masterful 2018 film showed one of the most disturbing instances of this supernatural occurrence in recent memory. After matriarch Annie Graham realises her dead mother was the head of a cult who was trying to put a demon in her son Peter, Annie herself only has moments to discover this before she herself is possessed, and oh boy! The Demon King Payman does not pull any punches. Annie floats through the air, climbs the walls like a spider, and in a particularly distressing scene, repeatedly slams her head against the floor of the attic, while whilst Peter tearfully begs her to stop. The tension building throughout the film bursts in this sequence, and Peter's terrified response only adds to the horror. In an almost poetic end, considering the way her daughter died earlier in the film, Annie's torment ends when she hovers above her son and decapitates herself with piano wire. It's horrific and as close to reality as a possession scene could be, which only makes it worse, really. Special mention goes to the Oscar-worthy performance by Toni Collette after she realises her daughter is dead. It's easily one of the most harrowing depictions of grief shown on film, in recent years. Number three, Hungry Hungry Cults, Mother. Like Lars von Trier, Darren Aronofsky has some interesting ideas about the world, which was shown most apparently in Mother. Telling the tale of two characters known only as him and Mother, whose lives soon spiral out of control in a biblical metaphor for the destruction of the earth, Mother unfortunately has a pretty terrible time. Even the joys of motherhood are short-lived. Mother's house has been overrun by demented fans of him, and they are rapidly trying to see the couple's newborn baby. Surprisingly, him thinks this is a completely good and fine idea. Mother, as most normal people would, knows this is a terrible idea. However, him steals the baby while mother sleeps, and when she awakes, she frantically searches for her lost child. Jennifer Lawrence's sobs and screams are heart-wrenching, and when she finds her baby, it is being held aloft above the crowd. Then, without warning, the rough handling of the newborn causes its neck to snap. It is so unexpected and utterly jaw-dropping, and it only gets worse when the raving cult decide to eat, yes, literally eat, the newly dead baby. Number two, Walk on the Wild Side, St. Maud. In quite possibly the best British horror film of the last decade, Maud is a traumatised hospice nurse with a dark secret. To cope with her trauma, Maud turned to Roman Catholicism, and it guides her everyday life to the point where it has become an obsession for her. When the woman she is caring for nicknames Maud her saviour, Maud sees it as a mission to save this woman's soul. However, Maud lapses in her faith when her patient fires her, and Maud feels lost in the world, unable to identify God's plan anymore. She acts hedonistically, and then feels really, really terrible about 
about it. As a form of punishment, Maud places religious imagery in her shoes and goes for a walk. Only it's not that simple. To keep the pictures in her shoes and keep God in her heart, Maud puts thumbtacks in the pictures and places them in the shoes so that the points are facing up. It is physically cringe-inducing when Maud puts her feet into her trainers and stands up, letting out a blood-curdling scream. The scene then cuts to show her blood-stained shoes and Maud's determined grimace as she walks through the streets of her seaside town. Number one, splitting up Bone Tomahawk. A Western horror from 2015 starring Kurt Russell. Sounds amazing. Inbred flesh-eating cannibals interesting. Interesting is not the word most people would use when describing how they felt after seeing this movie. Nauseous is perhaps more accurate. When Russell's character and his gang of heroes are captured by the tribe of cave dwellers, they are placed in cages within the dingy den. One of the men, Nick, is dragged from his makeshift cell and his friends can only watch helplessly as he is stripped naked and scalped. That's pretty bad, but it only gets worse. Nick, still alive, is lifted and held upside down by his ankles. One of the troglodytes produces a sharp weapon, and there's no nice way to say this, swings the weapon down between Nick's legs. Nick is bisected and ripped in half, whilst his companions and the audience can only watch in utter horror. The lack of music and low lighting makes the event feel far more real, and the cave creates a sense of claustrophobia that means you just cannot look away. It's gory, disturbing, and cements the film as a modern horror classic, for better or worse. And that's our list. What other recent horror movie scenes made you wince and turn away from the screen? Let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and swing on by our channel again sometime soon. Remember, watching horror movies isn't a competition, and you don't have to check out the films mentioned if you aren't comfortable doing so. I've been Tilly, and this has been What Culture. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.